Interference in Tin Films Consider a film of uniform thickness T and index of refraction N. So here is our film, uniform thickness T, index of refraction N, and it is in between air. So medium 1 is air, medium 2 is film with index of refraction N, and medium 3 is air, where the index of refraction is approximately equal to the index of refraction in vacuum, that is 1. Now we know that when we have a ray incident on this uh, film, uh, it will be partially reflected and partially transmitted. The transmitted par uh, portion will get refracted. And so we will have a loss in intensity of the light. And at the same time, uh, because we have conservation of energy, the photons that will pass through this interface will have the same frequency. But as we have discussed earlier, uh, the light will slow down in this medium, its wavelength will decrease by a factor of n. So the wavelength inside the film with index of refraction n will be lambda, the free wavelength, wavelength in vacuum, divided by the index of refraction n. And n, remember, is by definition c over v. c was equal to lambda f and uh, v is equal to lambda n over lambda f. So you can see that lambda n is lambda divided by n. Okay, so what will happen to this light that is incident on the interface between air and the film that is interface A? So we have ray 1 that is reflected, obeying, it's a specular reflection, obeying the law of reflection with the same angle. And, it, and then it will be partially transmitted, so the transmitted portion will be refracted. And the refracted portion uh, will hit the interface between the film and the air at, uh, at interface B. Now this will get reflected from this interface and also partially refracted to air. So we will have uh, the ray 3 coming out. And then the reflected portion will get uh, partially transmitted to air, that will be ray 2, and it may be reflected again. Uh, from uh, interface A and then uh, this portion will be transmitted as ray 4. So this will continue. Now we have discussed Lloyd's mirror. So ray 1 reflected from surface A is coming from low index of refraction region to high index of refraction region. Remember that this was analogous to a fixed end for uh, waves on a string. So this will have a phase shift, 180 degrees phase shift that corresponds to a path difference of lambda over 2. Now ray 2, uh, that is the ray that is coming out here, uh, basically is reflected from surface B. So this is the transmitted portion and reflected from surface B. Now surface B is from high index of refraction to low index of refraction. So therefore there is no uh, phase change for this case because it's analogous to free and for waves on a string. So, but if we comp uh, compare rays one and two, uh, there is an additional path difference here. So after producing ray 1, this ray travels down uh, and then up again. Now, assuming that we have close to normal incidence, so if this angle with the normal is small, then as a result of refraction, it will be even smaller. So we will have approximately an additional distance 2t traveled by this ray, that's ray number 2. So between ray number 1 and ray number 2, we have a path difference of 2t. Now, <clears throat> when this path difference is equal to the lambda n over 2, because this path difference is occurring inside this film with index of refraction n, uh, so I need a path difference of lambda n over 2 for constructive interference. Why? Because there was already a phase difference of 180 degrees. So the path difference r2 minus r1 uh, should be a wavelength or an integer multiple of wavelengths for a constructive interference. Now, uh, since I have the path difference occurring inside the film, 2t, this must be equal to n plus 1 half lambda in n. 
so m can be 0 1 2 etc so since lambda in this film is lambda divided by n it will be 2 and t equals m plus 1 half lambda for constructive interference now once again this is assuming close to normal incidence and if i have 2 t is equal to m lambda n uh, so i have a path, path difference that is going to give me an integer multiple of wavelengths in this film because I have a phase difference of 180 degrees there will be destructive interference so 20 equals m lambda is the condition for destructive interference so that r2 minus r1 will be m plus one half uh, lambda so uh, basically lambda over 2 3 lambda over 2 5 lambda over 2 etc all right now, if I concentrate on rays 3 and 4, what is ray 3? It's the transmitted portion, so that doesn't have any phase shift. And ray number 4 is basically, uh, this one goes through a reflection at interface B, uh, which is high to low index, so no phase shift. And again, high to low index, no phase shift. And ray number 4 also has no phase shift. So what is the path difference between 3 and 4? This has traveled an extra distance 2t. So 2t equals m lambda and 4 constructive interference or 2nt equals m lambda. Once again, this path difference occurs inside the film. Now, if I look at another example where I have air a film with index of refraction 1.1 and another one with 1.2 so index of refraction is increasing as i go down for ray one which is reflected from low index to high index interface there will be a phase shift 180 degrees for ray two i have a reflection uh, at b which is also low to high so another phase shift 180 degrees so total phase shift between rays one and two is zero therefore the path difference will count the path difference is approximately equal to 2t so if this has a uniform uh, thickness t here so 2t will be the approximate path difference assuming close to normal incidence so 2t equals m lambda where lambda uh, because the path difference occurs in this film, m lambda uh, an intermediate will be the condition for constructive interference. The wavelength in this medium is lambda divided by an intermediate. So 2t an intermediate equals m lambda for constructive interference. Let's take a look at an example. Interference in a soap film. Calculate the minimum thickness of a soap bubble film that results in constructive interference in the reflected light if the film is illuminated with light whose wavelength in free space is 600 nanometers. The index of refraction of the soap film is 1.33. All right. So uh, we can concentrate on uh, ray 1 and ray 2 here so we have ray 1 reflected from this interface between n equals 1 and n equals 1.33 so that goes through a 180 degrees phase shift and for this one we have a, a thickness t of this film so we're going to calculate the minimum thickness here and we we have an additional path difference 2t so the total phase shift uh, will be a pi due to reflection of ray 1 and then we have uh, 2 pi over lambda n times uh, 2t uh, which has to be equal to uh, 2 pi times m for constructive interference. So the phase shift has to be integer multiples of uh, 2 pi uh, in order to have constructive interference. That corresponds to integer multiples of a wavelength a path difference. Or we can say that the path difference delta uh, between these two is equal to uh, lambda n over 2 for uh, minimum 
uh, thickness. So this will be the first constructive interference. This is equal to uh, m plus 1 half lambda n. And this must be equal to 2t, where m is 0, 1, 2, 3. But for t minimum, we should have m equals 0. So we have for the minimum thickness, lambda divided by 4n, that corresponds to m equals to 0. Now you can see here, m equals 0, the path difference should be lambda n over 2, that's equal to 2, 2t, two and for minimum, this has to be equal to, uh, let me make this, uh, delta equals lambda n over 2 for minimum thickness, which is the case for m equals 0. So this will give me, uh, for the minimum thickness, 600 nanometers divided by 4 times the index of refraction 1.33 so 4 times n and therefore the minimum thickness of the soap bubble film I find to be 112.8 nanometers. <clears throat> so this basically is similar to the case that we have discussed at the beginning. So this is the situation here. We have 180 degree phase shift. Therefore, the path difference that occurs between the two rays must be equal to uh, lambda n over 2 for minimum thickness. Now, if the film thickness is twice the minimum thickness, does that produce constructive interference. Now I have a new thickness t prime is equal to 2t minimum. t minimum was a lambda over uh, 4n. So 2t minimum is lambda over 2n. So uh, I will see that 2t prime is equal to lambda over n. So that's the path difference. This path difference should be equal to n plus one half lambda n for constructive interference. And this is only possible uh, if I have m equals one half. And m is an integer, so this cannot happen. Therefore, no, if you double the thickness, you will not see uh, constructive interference. Another example, uh, solar cell devices that generate electricity when exposed to sunlight are often coated with a transparent tin film of silicon monoxide, N equals 1.45, to minimize reflective losses from the surface. Suppose a silicon solar cell, N equals 3.5, is coated with a tin film of silicon monoxide for this purpose. Determine the minimum tin, uh, film thickness that produces the least reflection at a wavelength of 550 nanometers near the center of the visible spectrum. Now this is similar to the second case that I have discussed. We have ray 1 that is reflected from low index to high index interface, therefore 180 degree phase shift, and ray 2 also reflected from low index to high index interface, another 180 degrees phase shift. So I realize that uh, rays 1 and 2 both go through 180 degree phase shift. Therefore, the path difference between the two rays uh, that occurs due to this additional distance traveled by ray 2, again assuming close to normal incidence, 2t must be equal to integer number of uh, multiples of the wavelength in the second medium for constructive interference. That's because the path difference is occurring in the second film. So uh, this path difference delta is equal to 2t 
which is now for destructive interference, n plus 1 half lambda n2, and that's the condition for destructive interference. Now, an m is an integer, 0, 1, 2, etc. So what is the minimum thickness, t minimum? So we should have m equals uh, 0. For m equals 0, we will have t minimum is lambda uh, n2 over 4. So it will be lambda n2 over 4 which is 550 nanometers uh, divided by 4 times the index of refraction n2, 1.45, because lambda n2 is lambda divided by n2. So this will give us a minimum thickness of 94.8 nanometers. All right, so let's summarize what we said here. A manifestation of uh, Lloyd's mirror is basically in, uh, in the case of interference in thin films. And the simplification that we use in this case is close to normal incidence so that when we think about path differences that occur in a medium, we can just look at the thickness of the medium. Um, and another important uh, thing that we have to remember is that when light enters a medium with index of refraction n, its wavelength decreases uh, as lambda over n because its frequency doesn't change and the propagation speed of the light decreases. So the propagation speed of the light is always less than or equal to c, 3 times 10 to 8 meters per second, its value in vacuum. And for air, we take the index of refraction approximately equal to 1, that corresponds to vacuum. And uh, we have considered two cases. In one case, we have n equals 1 air, a film, and n equals 1 air on the other side. Uh, for this case, if we consider the, um, the rays that are uh, adding up in the air, uh, we have ray 1 reflected from this low to high index of refraction interface that goes through 180 degrees phase shift. Ray 2, which travels an extra distance 2t, uh, and it reflects from a high to low index of refraction interface, therefore no phase shift. Therefore, we have a natural 180 degree phase shift between rays 1 and 2. Because of the extra path difference traveled in the uh, film, with index of refraction n, if this path difference is equal to lambda over 2, where lambda is the in, uh, wavelength inside the film, lambda n, or lambda over n, this has to give constructive interference. If it's n plus 1 half uh, lambda uh, n, it will give us... Uh, so 2t equals lambda n over 2 will give us constructive interference. And if we have... Uh, 2t equals m plus 1 half lambda n, m equals 0, 1, 2, etc. Uh, this will give us uh, 2nt equals m plus 1 half lambda for constructive interference. So this is the case for m equals 0. So m equals 0 case is the first constructive interference condition, but this will give higher order uh, interference uh, conditions. So 2t equals m lambda n or 2nt equals m lambda will give us destructive interference uh, because that will produce a path difference that is a, a m plus 1 half lambda between the two rays. Okay, and uh, when we consider the transmitted rays, for the transmitted rays, ray 3, we have no reflection, ray 4, high to low index of refraction medium, so we have... Uh, no additional phase changes, so th there is only path difference. So 2t equals m lambda n for constructive interference in this case. Um, if we have the situation where the index of refraction is changing, let's go from medium 1 to 2 to 3. If it, the index of refraction is increasing, wherever we see a low to high reflection, we have 180 degrees phase shift for ray 1 and also for ray 2 at this interface. That means we have no phase change between, uh, net phase change between 1 and 2. We have additional path difference 
of um, 2t 2t equals m lambda n for uh, where lambda n is the index of refraction in the intermediate region where the path difference occurs we have constructive interference so uh, we have seen an example for the first situation uh, in the case of a soap bubble film uh, so here I have noted that I can look at this in terms of a total phase shift because path difference divided by lambda is equal to phase difference uh, divided by 2 pi. I can write the phase difference as 2 pi over lambda n times 2t. So that's the additional phase difference occurring here. And then we have a pi phase difference due to reflection. This has to be equal to 2m pi for constructive interference. This is equivalent to saying I have a path difference lambda n over 2 developing uh, due to the travel of the ray 2 inside the film. So m plus 1 half lambda n is equal to 2t for uh, the uh, constructive interference. So uh, that's I'm looking for the condition for constructive interference. M equals zero gives me the minimum possible thickness. And if I double that thickness, I see that that corresponds to M equals one half for the constructive interference condition. Since that's not allowed, M is an integer. This uh, doubling the thickness actually uh, destroys the constructive interference condition. And uh, for the second case, we talked about a non-reflective coating on a solar cell. Here we had both rays going through 180 degree phase shifts. So we concentrated on the path difference of 2t equal to m times uh, lambda n2. So lambda divided by 1.45 for constructive interference and m plus 1 half lambda n2 for destructive interference. Since we're looking for the least reflection uh, condition here, uh, the least reflection condition basically uh, will be uh, corresponding to um, destructive interference at that interface. So that means we're looking for m equals 0 here. So we substitute m equals 0, we get t is equal to lambda n2 over 4 or lambda over n2 over f uh, multiplied by 4 and 2 multiplied by 4. This gives us the minimum thickness of 94.8 nanometers in this case.